Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us at Enterprise Connect this year. I'm Brett Weigel, Senior Vice President of Product Management for Digital and AI at Genesis. And we're excited today to be joined by Zeus Caravalla, who's going to talk to us about AI and CX uh, and how companies can get started with these things. Zeus is the founder and principal analyst of ZK Research, where he provides a mix of tactical advice to help his clients with immediate needs in the current business climate and also with long term strategic advice about how to innovate in CX. And he covers a wide breadth of markets with a focus on areas where there are major disruptions happening, the disruption from cloud and AI and customer experience being one of them. One of the biggest changes to communications over the past 18 months has been the integration of AI into products. Today, there's a cornucopia of AI capabilities which are available, but variety doesn't automatically lead to good results. The thoughtful use of AI to support customer and agent interactions is vital to their effectiveness. In this short, but we hope impactful conversation, we're gonna discuss some of the do's and don'ts of AI implementation for digital customer engagement and the value it can provide when executed correctly. So Zayas, welcome. Let's start by talking about some of the big, big market implications you're seeing now and why AI is so important to so many of our customers. Yeah, thanks Brett. Um, and uh, certainly AI, I, I think is important to almost uh, everything today. We're gonna to see it infused into almost everything that we use and certainly customer experience is one of the big areas of adoption because it has such a big impact on on the way companies deal with their customers and so you know we've seen a real acceleration of the use of ai um, in 2018 only about 35 percent of interactions were impacted by ai or customer interactions that is uh, i'm projecting that that'll be 67 percent by the end of this year and I'm estimating that it'll be as much as 80% in 2025. Now that doesn't mean completely answered by AI, but AI played a role in that. I think we'll eventually get to a point where almost every interaction uh, is, is influenced by AI, either completely or through some sort of recommendation to an agent. Now, the reason for this is because we, we live in the experience economy today, right? Today, 90% of companies compete on customer experience. That's up from only 28% five years ago. And so customer experience is now and has been the number one brand differentiator for a couple of years. And so using AI to carry much of the automation, personalization, recommendation type of burden that agents face is essential to keeping up. AI-based contextual interactions, I think uh, really determines success today, but it's not a zero sum game. And I think this is, it's important to understand, uh, you know, for every yin, there's a yang and there's some risks of using AI and ultimately the penalties for getting it wrong are, are significant, right? If you, if you, um, there's a lot of industry data out there that talks about how consumers, you know, they're very fickle today. In fact, one of my uh, another interesting data point is then last year, two thirds of millennials admitted that they changed loyalties to a brand because of a single bad experience. And that's becoming more and more common across age demographics. We just, you know, we don't have time for bad interactions. And so I think, um, although there's a big push in the industry right now to get customer engagement right, and the, the you know, the penalty of using AI wrong uh, can actually, it can upset a customer, it can set an organization back. And with customer experience acting as, you know, the most important brand differentiator, you can't really afford that kind of risk. So, you know, again, study after study has shown that customers have very little tolerance for poor customer experience. So getting it right the first time, it, you know, is really important. So I think AI will continue to play a big role on improving C CX, but um, if you use it incorrectly, uh, you know, it'll have a negative effect on your organization. If you do it right, of course, it'll have a big accelerant, uh, be a big accelerant to your company in, in gaining market leadership. So, you know, the, the, you know, although the risks are there, the stakes are high. Yeah, I, you know, I've, through the pandemic, I've definitely been, I think, a, an example of uh, the, the consumer fickleness, you know, sort of with all the food delivery services we've all had to use, you know, choosing one versus the other based on how easy it is to resolve an issue, right? And just noticing the seamlessness with which you can do that with some of the companies out there. Other companies, you got to call the restaurant, it gets kind of clunky, right? So yeah. um, you, you, you tend to navigate to the things that are the easiest for you as the consumer. Um, yeah, consumers want things to be easy and the easier just the, you know, the, the bigger the share of wallet that you get. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, I don't think that consumers really care whether AI is used or not. It's it's not about this is an intelligent experience. It's a, it's a, it's about is this an easy experience or does it have the right value for me? You know, and I, I think that that like sets us up well to kind of, you know, talk about how companies can apply AI. Right. 
Yeah, and in fact, that's an important point because I think we we talk about AI and companies, you know, say should they advertise or not, but AI really needs to be invisible, right? If if there's if there's a barrier to get over, if there's some threshold to enter, if the agent, you know, even that's talking to the customer has to do some things to enable it, it's never going to work. It it needs to be that thing that's invisible in the background, but it's feeding information to both your agents and your customers and even your salespeople, marketing people, so they always have the right information available to them. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that, that that's awesome. I mean, it's it seems that you know that I have a lot of customer conversations that are about what types of things should I try to automate or apply AI to. You know, how how should companies think about where to apply AI and and where where does where's where does that risk exist? Yeah, it's a good question because it's not everything, right? And um, uh, so I have to think about. Um, you know, we analysts like to think about things in quadrants, right? That's that's just the way we live. And if you think about um, customer interactions and put uh, frequency of interactions on one on one axis and complexity of interactions on the other axis, things that are low complexity, high uh, high frequency, that's perfect for an AI. Things like you know, reset passwords, check your flight status, um, those types of interactions. You know, they're they're ideally uh, suited for it. When you deviate away from that, though that's when you start to have problems, right? If a customer calls in and they will have a, you know, four legs to a flight with different length stopovers and things like that, there's no way an AI is going to have that much background information. Also for AI, there's a, you know, there's a learning phase as well. So they're not perfect as well. I, I think you want to think of AI almost like AI is used in automobiles today. It's not ready to self-drive, Right. But there's a lot of great technology out there to make us better drivers, parallel park assist, lane change alert and things like that. Right. So, for you know, so the easy things let the AI handle for the harder things, let the AI assist the agent in, in making smarter decisions. Yeah. I mean, you know, folks, or talk about, the customer too. folks talk about the super agent, right? <laughs> the the, the yeah. agent is, you know, augmented through the AI. You know, what, what, what kinds of things really work for applying AI to the agent workspace or the agent environment, or just to make the operation smoother? Yeah. I think the term super agent is a good one because I like to think of AI as the agents, uh, you know, that company's secret superpower. Right. Um, and it's been, AI has been looked at that way in IT operations and things like that. So wherever you want, you want to apply, you take that skill set and you almost, you almost multiply it. So for agents though, uh, they're better equipped to address customers needs really at any point in that journey, uh, less of the onus is on them to do a lot of the heavy lifting that they might have had to do in order to find certain information, understand, you know, the the status, the state of the customer or whatever. And they're able to, um, they're more able to expend energy on providing empathy, uh, helping the customer solve the problem. Uh, you know, I, I, um, uh, I, I was having a conversation with one of the, uh, the CIO of uh, one of the, you know, the current uh, financial applications, right? It's geared towards millennials. Um, right. when, when they first put their customer service platform in place, uh, he was telling me they didn't think they'd have, uh, any need for human interaction because they were dealing with millennials. Right. And you, you would sort of naturally think that they would gravitate to automated systems, yeah. but there's a lot of what, what they quickly came to learn is that when people want to talk about money, right, they want to talk to a person and money gives people great anxiety. Right. And so you want, yeah. um, uh, you know, a, uh, an answer fast and you want it to be accurate. Right. The last thing you want is somebody, the agent to tell you something and then have it be wrong. And that's also true, you know, for for health and or even for basic things like refunds and stuff. Whenever something goes awry in our life, it creates it's, it's those anxiety-driven situations that can help agents uh, be able to deliver the right answer, more empathy. Um, and so I think, um, you know, that's you know, to me, that's how you make that agent a super agent. So it's important to think about where humans exist amidst you know, AI and automation. So as they come into it, it, it's more of a partnership between the two. You're not fighting it. It's not taking your job, right? It's supportive technology and assistive technology, right. not one that's there to eliminate people. Yeah. And I, and I think that also the way that you were talking about the conversation with the CIO is that, you know, there, there's industry specific journeys and versions of this that, you know, you, you need to string together those moments. Yes, you can enhance some of them with AI, hopefully all of them with AI, but um, it's really about understanding that journey. That's definitely how we're thinking within our product teams at Genesis to, you know, create the products of the future is that, you know, we, we have to be local to those moments if we're going to have relevance for sure. 
Um, I wanted to ask you, Zayas, as well, this is a great conversation just about kind of companies coming to AI, how can they think about measuring uh, effectiveness and you know, what kind of data and measurement frameworks have you been using with your clients? Yeah, that's a, that's a difficult question to answer because there's so many metrics that we track in contact centers and customer service, right? And so there's a lot of classic measurements, you know, length of call, right. uh, number of calls answered, NPS, CSAT score, those all definitely play a role. And part of it is what you're trying to automate. So for instance, with, um, with call routing, right, you can use AI to help route the call quicker. That's an easy one to track, just first call resolution, right? If it's going to the right person, they resolve the call. If it's not, they don't, right? And so you should see a big jump in, uh, in first call resolution. I think, you know, the big metrics, obviously, of net promoter score and CSAT, that definitely plays a role because now you know if your customers are happier or not. But I think there's, you know, with all the baseline, all, or sorry, all the metrics that we track, I think it's important to get a baseline of where you're at measure, you know, measure, measure. And then as the, you know, the AI engines start to kick in, you should see some improvement in those types of things. You obviously want to tweak it as needed, uh, but but there is a certain science to it. And I, but I think one, one of the cautionary points I have though, is uh, businesses shouldn't wait for perfection. And this is something, you know, in a, in a getting started point of view and trying to measure it, things like that, you might put it in. And then like I was talking about first call resolution, and then they might realize, well, it's not really having that big an impact. But the, the important thing to remember about AI systems is they get better over time. There's a certain learning process they have to go through. So right. just because you put it in today, if it's a true AI system, it will get better over time. And then that first call resolution will go up a little bit, go up a little bit more, go up a little bit more. And then pretty soon you'll see it'll have gone up a whole bunch. And so I, I think it's, a, you know, the, the threshold to get started is better than people. And as you know, whenever we implement people type processes, we make a lot of mistakes. And so that's a pretty low bar. Um, but uh, but I, but I, I, I do think that, uh, you know, all the metrics that are tracked into contact center are valid. And I, like I said, I would measure them. Uh, but also keep an eye on CSAT and NPS. Yeah, I mean, I think those are some great points. And it, it just feels like, you know, when, when we have companies that are coming to AI for the first time, just kind of getting some of the basic concepts of how training data sets work and, you know, sort of adopting an experimentation first philosophy, um, the, those, those things are really, uh, really, really tend to work out well. And then also, like you said, I mean, it's scientific method, right? So if you're going to measure something, the first thing you do is set a baseline, you know, don't, yeah. don't sort of just change 14 levers and then you wonder what made the difference, right? You, know, you yeah. got to go one at a time and be deliberate about the approach and then eventually you'll get to better to better results. So that's yeah, great. the great thing about contact centers, though, is, you know, you work in that space um, or, or any aspect of customer experience, we measure the heck out of it. Yeah, that's uh, true. we always we, we almost over right measure. Right so we so we've got good we've got good baselines to start with. It's not trying to apply it to, uh, you know, drivers or even IT operations or something where there aren't very many good metrics. We've got the metrics already. Yeah, yeah, that that, that makes total sense. So Zayas, so I, I wanted to ask you about, you know, kind of longer term, you know, so com companies are kind of getting into the space. A lot of companies have a practice going, but, you know, they're learning more. But where where are we going as, as a market across customer experience and thinking about AI and applying it to the problems of the day? Yeah, I think one of the, first of all, one of the things to think about, though, is just data and data aggregation. Um you know, you, uh, I know, you know, your organization has been big on trying to think of the customer journey as one continuous journey, not a set of continuous, you know, discontinued uh, steps along the way. And so there's an axiom in data sciences where we say good data leads to good insights, bad data leads to bad insights, and partial data leads to partial insights. And right, so from a CX perspective, you want to have as broad a view as possible as that customer journey. So machine learning, you know, it's a, um, you know, it's a, uh, it, it requires that closed loop uh, type of uh, system. And uh, so you want to work with a vendor that, you know, that has that broad data set that helps, that helps you understand where to start. More broadly, though, from, uh, you know, looking ahead, I think the concept of experience as a service is not just about inbound calls. I think sometimes we over rotate to that because that's the thing that we know the best. 
but I think organizations to think need to think more broadly about all the touch points with the customer, right? There's marketing campaigns, there's sales campaigns, there's customer service or customer success people, you know, you have field service people. These we all of these touch the customer. And so AI has a role to play in, in capturing intent and providing the mechanisms for proactive. Uh, and predictive engagements in all of those. And so, you know, outbound sales campaigns, for example, AI may be used to make a recommendation to an agent uh, to provide a really good deal to a customer that's had multiple bad experiences with that brand uh, versus a customer that's completely happy that perhaps doesn't need the same kind of incentives, right? And, um, you know, otherwise you wind up in these situations where um, the marketing team's doing something then that the, the customer service wouldn't recommend because of some bad experiences yeah. and that just yeah. creates that negative impact. So, you know, and, but all of this goes back to, to the data piece as well, the knowledge base that you build around the customer journey um, that all goes, that all becomes part of the supporting mechanism uh, for, for a really sharp and impactful AI because you have that broad data set. And so, you know, I, th I think it's, uh, you know, safe to say we live in a data driven world today uh, but that data needs to be consolidated and that single source of truth, you know, versus a lot of those silos that uh, we've had historically. Yeah, yeah, that that makes sense. That makes sense. Do, you know, I wanted to ask you, you know, sort of beyond, you know, kind of classic service, because again, you know, we talk about CX, but then like you said, a lot of times we end up kind of over indexing on it's about inbound calls and and that kind of thing, you know, how do you see the applicability of AI beyond to, you know, kind of into, you know, say that directly into the marketing world, for instance? Yeah, well, that's, uh, um, uh, I've, I've seen plenty of examples there where, yeah. um, you know, companies can, you know, might market differently to different people based on their experiences with the brand, but you have to have that complete view of that journey. Uh, you know, one example I saw, for instance, was um, uh, an online retailer um, that uh, they knew a certain problem was occurring with the product. Now, historically, what would happen there is the product would go out, the customer would realize it's not working properly, they call in, the customer service person would have no idea what they're talking about, <laughs> and then, um, uh, you know, and that would cause some frustration, you'd bring it back in, you'd RMA it and send them a new one, right? In this case, they use that as a marketing opportunity where they reach back out to the customer. They knew these products would be defective and they offered a free upgrade. All you had to do was fill out a form online and they sent you a whole new product, right? And and But that's an example of they knew their customer journey, where they were, who purchased it. They knew what was wrong with the product. And so they had a complete view of supply chain all the way through purchase, right? And so that saved them a lot of embarrassment. It, 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 you know, it's certainly from a customer experience perspective, you're not dealing with bad products. And so I think there's, you know, there's, that's just a very small example, but um, you know, there's lots of ways we can, we can use that um, uh, to help both sale market and sell better and, and service. And so when you think of sales, marketing and service, we think of those as three separate disciplines, but they're all intertwined. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Right. And so that's, you know, that that's where an AI can help us connect the dots between those three silos. Yeah. And, and I, I also love that example because it also, you know, there really is kind of an unaddressed middle sometimes with many companies, which is it's marketing sales and service functionally, but it's also the core product or service that you offer. That's your main thing. And what is the AI? What is the what are the CX experiences teaching you about how that thing needs to change? You know, and and can you respond to hey, you have a problem with it? Maybe that's an opportunity elsewhere. So I think that's a great point. Well, yeah, um, and I know these things are working now because it seems every time I get push an Instagram ad, I want to buy the thing. So <laughs> <laughs> energy, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's right. And you know, I think I think that things are becoming more sort of responsive and sensitive throughout our organizations over time, and you know, uh, you know, as businesses continue to experiment with AI, they'll, they'll, they'll uncover new opportunities. And, you know, we're, we're certainly, you know, here collectively to help, you know, and, and to engage on those topics. Yeah, well, I think the, the, the more examples people see, the better too, because I think we're, yeah. we're at such an early stage right now that we almost, we don't know what we don't know. Like, we don't know what's possible until we see what's possible. And that's going to fuel, I'm really excited about the future of this, because we have just started to scratch the surface to this. And I think over the next two years, we're just we're just going to see the innovation curve just take right take off. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Well, Zayas, thank you so much for this conversation. I know our viewers are going to get a lot out of it. Um, at this time, we wanted to pivot to show you an example of what's possible with a sample use case that exemplifies 
implementation of AI to support both customers and agents, so self-service and agent-assisted modes. So I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, Cody Smith, who's going to walk through a demo of uh, Genesis DX, which is the great new platform for Genesis to do exactly these things. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. And, and thanks again to Zayas. And we hope you enjoy the demo. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cody Smith, and today I'll be showing you how Genesis DX will be able to provide an integrated and seamless customer experience across your web journeys. If we look at this simple example of a retail website, where we can see that we have live chat enabled by Genesis DX, we can use the capabilities of the platform to be able to also recognize and detect user behaviors so that we can prompt the correct calls to action so that users know that they always have service available to them at any time. We can see that just based on even a simple navigation that I'm presented with a call to action to engage with the bot and it allows me to then provide my desired language that I would want to engage with. Using integrations to be able to help provide that type of support allows me to be able to provide content and experience for all of my customers based upon their desired language, even if those are not languages that I either staff with inside of the contact center or can provide content in that language natively. As we come into beginning to engage with the AI chatbot, we can see things like frequently asked questions that will then be prompted based upon the frequency of these different types of questions coming in. But we can also use natural language processing to be able to detect and help find the correct response based upon that customer's intents. Common questions such as, what are your store hours? Allow us to then be able to not only provide those types of responses, but can also save that customer time by being able to allow for autocomplete to provide those different suggestions so that we can start to provide that response. Again, this experience is very seamless and conversational to the end user, and it's helpful for the business to be able to know if this experience is providing the correct one for the customer by allowing that customer to provide simple to interact with feedback directly with inside of the conversation. Even if the user is using their own language or also contains different spelling errors or again wanting to uh, maybe just refer to things in a slightly different way, you know, maybe we ask about things like, you know, why do revolutions matter? We can still see that again, in this case, we're able to detect using that natural language processing to be able to adapt and train those responses to come through. Now, while having the AI chatbot in place is one of those uh, areas that can provide that seamless and always available uh, uh, virtual agent to your customers, we know that in some cases it's necessary to be able to escalate to a live agent. And we might need to escalate to a live agent based upon a number of factors. Maybe we don't have uh, sufficient responses to be able to respond back to the customer with, and we don't want to leave them with uh, a, a dissatisfaction. But there also just may be end user preference where they would like to speak with an agent. Again, as a Genesis DX user, you have the control of being able to set up and manage that experience however you would like. I would like to chat with an agent. Will allow us to, again, create those different channeling moments that allow us to present those options based upon agent availability, different skill sets based upon the questions coming through. So that when we go through and accept this chat as an agent, if we switch gears a moment and think about what the agent is then going to see, they're then going to then be assigned to those different customers who are coming in and using intelligent routing to then be able to route this to the correct agent and skill set with inside of your organization. I can see that I've recently been assigned to this agent uh, as an agent and can then allow that conversation to quickly get accepted and become part of my queue. So that as I begin to correspond with this customer, I have full context of that entire chat history that allows me to see 
all of the conversations with the AI chatbot, including translated and original context, if there is the need for those types of integrations. But it provides that seamless experience, not only for the customer, but for the agent who can then go on to deliver the rest of that conversation. How can I help? And we again get to the interaction between the live agent and the customer. Now, AI has not been removed from this conversation. It continues to play a very integral part in, so that as the user were to come in and say another simple question, do you carry the new Prince album? As an agent, I have access to all of the different AI responses with inside of my smart advisor agent assist tool that allow me to leverage that different AI knowledge and have it presented to me as suggested responses that I can then click and carry over into the chat with one click. Once I do this again, this is then going to help continue to train and supervise that AI and natural language algorithm to be able to adapt and learn over time so that again, as these questions come through, as the different ways that those questions can be asked can all continue to help lead to the correct response. As an agent, I might be working with that single customer, but I may also have multiple customers across multiple channels as well. Being able to have that personalized queue that can provide me as an agent with all of those different work items from the different channels allows me to have all of these tools available regardless of where the customer is interacting from. Again, I can see that I have a an SMS text work item waiting for me that I can again either continue to work or maybe come back to at a later point if I need to provide more focused attention on the customer in the chat. As these chats continue on, again, this is all part of that customer experience, but we also include this as part of the ongoing feedback loop that allows for the AI and the knowledge content to get increasingly intelligent over time. As an admin, I would have access to the content center for being able to manage all of the different content and see the measured results of how my knowledge is performing. Being able to track not only the number of engagements that have occurred over my given time period, I can also look and detect the things like my self-service score that help me understand how my knowledge is helping customers get to first contact resolution to their needs more easily. Being able to have a bit of a heat map and what we can see is all of the different clustered intents based upon the frequency of the questions that the customers are asking, but also seeing how those questions are asked in those customer language. We can see that while the intent of what are your store hours might have a standard way of asking it, we can see that customers have asked, what are your store hours? When do you open? When does the shop open? And again, those customers are all looking for the same response just in their own language. And while this is then part of that reporting and tracking for that ongoing optimization, content teams have the ability to then quickly go in and update all of their knowledge, manage it within a central location so that we have the ability to then create those ongoing optimizations throughout your digital experience. The tools that are provided for being able to manage this are seamless to be able to go in and quickly edit, but also to create new content as we go through, being able to add things like different phrasings and synonyms into those different knowledge articles really allow for us to help do a supervised learning for the AI virtual agent who will then be helping provide that self-service and first contact resolved engagement. There are a number of different tools that can be used for managing that digital experience. These are a handful that are really a part of that core experience that Genesis DX provides. We'd be happy to show you more in-depth demos and again, continue to discuss how Genesis DX can help play a part in your digital experience. Thank you.